that was a brilliant callback on the girl Cinderella and the Ola Aina, the dichotomy of that show with what we saw last night. While Gelson Sundala is still technically a very sophisticated player to deal with, I think the skill sets of Simon Adingra is what were key or was key in yesterday's contest in the, in the sense that in the simplest of terms, he's a 1v1 monster. He's a defender's nightmare. He can, and as I explained earlier, can combine a mix of pace, dribbling mm -hmm. ability, and remarkable decision making to go with. Very so, good with both feet. Exactly. Both. So when he has to pause, draw team the opponents or tease the opponents to get closer, when he has to engage, he he at every single game stage he makes the right call. Mm. When he has to whip in the cross, he, he knows how to. There was a chance he had in the first half when I thought maybe he could have cut back. But after watching the replay a number of times, I understood why his best bet was to have attempted to score. The, the save he pulled off um, St Stanley Wabali in the first of, of that situation. And, and it was one of numerous situations where he got in behind Ola Aina. So beyond the dribbling ability, beyond the pace, beyond the decision making, it's the fact that he's persistent, he's intense, he's not stopping. And when a defender is marking a player like that, whether he's in possession or not, you cannot stop to think about anything else. He is your preoccupation. He, what you have to, at any point in time, respond to what he's doing and hope that the ball doesn't... You, you only breathe when the ball doesn't come to that side of, of the opponent's attack. And unfortunately for Ola Aina, look, you play that game five or six times, it is still going to play out the same way because the Nigerian defence yesterday was the same as it was post the Equatorial Guinea, which sure. is to create the overloads in the wide areas, essentially to provide the extra layer of protective cover for their wing backs in order to ensure that they are not exposed. So whenever Simon Adingra or anyone on the flanks got possession, you saw that an extra midfielder or an extra defender got close to provide support. But still, when you have the quality that Simon Adingra has, sometimes it doesn't make any difference. Mm. Uh, big revelations indeed in terms of, um, you know, uh, what we're seeing talent-wise at this tournament. And that obviously is what is uh, becoming the big conversation after the Africa Cup of Nations. Now, um, uh, you have this chart, which is also showing us um, who dominated at which tournament in uh, the last 10. So, so this will be for mm. the last 10 best performances yeah, yeah, of sure. the Afghan. Play of the tournament. It's obviously the Egyptians during their... Uh, uh, glory run uh, between 2006 and 2010 would have their place. And I fondly remember the Hosni Abdurabo performance mm. in 2008. For my money, the best performing midfielder that the Afghan has seen in the modern era. In the modern era. I don't yeah. think we've seen anyone as dominant. It's, but also, it's also interesting that you had an Ahmed Hassan do it in 2006 and then come back in 2010 to do it again. To do, to do it again. I, I mean, look... These are the guys who make it impossible to, to mention Mohamed Salah in the midst of greats of Egyptian football mm. as far as African football is concerned because mm. their legacy is there. Mm. They, they have written their signatures over consecutive AFCON tournaments. I mean, you have, you have a Hussam Hassan for you instance. You cannot tell the AFCON story without them. <laughs> and then you've got Christopher Katongo in 2000. Mm, yeah. very and, and he got them. a promotion in the military uh, due to this performance that he put up in, in leading. that tournament. Yes. And yes. then I think from, so from 2012, mm. we saw the turn of the forwards or the wide players because well. between 2006 and 2010, you had the central midfielders. Then in 2012, Christopher Katongo, Jonathan Petropa, another wide player in 2013, Christian Atu, another wide player in 2015, uh, Christian Basagog, another wide player in 2017, before you had another midfielder in Ishmael Benasser winning it in 2019, and then it reverts back to Sadio Mane in 2019 among the wide players or the forwards. Oh. And then finally, the warrior that is William Trustekong. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we can't stop talking about William Trustekong because, I mean, in terms of performance, he was so uh, alert and he was, uh, you know, so ready at every single point. And the kinds of interventions he made yeah. were, were legendary. And, and uh, or in hindsight, you do realize that they were very key. Otherwise, we would have had a different story to tell regarding how many goals uh, Nigeria, uh, you know, uh, would, have would have conceded. And I think the appreciation for what he's done only goes to show you that 
football fans are more forgiving than we like to admit. The goal that, the winning goal for Ivory Coast yesterday is a goal that perhaps if he had stayed closer to Sebastian Haller, maybe he could have put him under pressure, maybe put him off or even prevent that goal. But no one is blaming him for him because the guy has been so good, which goes to show you that even the most cynical of us can be forgiven and can be very accommodating of mistakes at the highest level if we are convinced in our minds that, look, the characters in question have given everything and that sometimes, just sometimes, they're only human after all. And you, can't, you cannot blame them too much when, when situations like that happen. And for me, he's an example of everything you want to see in a player who values the national team and leaves everything on the pitch. Very well. Nats, if you're talking about Ikon, I read an article by The Athletic, and they are comparing his performance at this tournament to a player like Carlos Puyo at the 2010 World Cup. If you're looking at the character, yeah. the inspiration he provides to the team, the crucial goals he's scoring, it's not far-fetched that they are comparing him to a player like Puyol, who you see fights like a warrior. It's not easy for, to see that they are comparing an African playing at the Africa Cup of Nations to a player like Puyol, Carlos who was Puyol. playing for Barcelona throughout his years, and captain of the team. team. Absolutely outstanding performances mm. from Truce. Look, I would say his Truce Decon's performance has a bit more value and is even more profound because everything Carlos Puyol did was in a subtle team. Mm. The Spain team at that World Cup in 2010 has uh, about seven Barcelona players. They and they had, had won the European Championships two years prior. They had won the UEFA Champions League in 2009. Um, and then I think in 2006 as well, he led the Barcelona team to go. So all around him, there was quality. The Nigerian team had no right to go this far in this tournament. Nobody expected them to get this far. Everything good they did, the fact that the manager had to reject things and then find a new strategy was possible because of the mm. quality that, that he brought on board. Achu, thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, check out social media in a couple of hours. We're going to see, you know, um, you know, you're going to see some of the you know, the moments of philosophy, <laughs> sport philosophy. Uh, Achu, thank you so much. It's been wonderful. And uh, we're just praying that another one comes quickly. The Euros are coming uh, yeah. soon. Yeah. But All more right. importantly, the AFCON is coming back next year. It has to come back more quickly. Important. Yeah, quickly. And so um, would like to say a very big thank you to our backroom staff in football terms, led by Sarah Opari, uh, the, the indefatigable Sarah Opari, and uh, every single member of the camera crew, uh, production, uh, Martin, Fidel... Uh, Mubarak, uh, I can see Razak here as well, um, you know, everybody, every single person. Uh, it's been wonderful. It's been a wonderful season of football. Uh, Manasse, we see you. Um, thank you guys so much. It's been wonderful. It's been amazing. And we sure are going to deliver for you another very big one as we enter different seasons of uh, football. So um, from all of us here, it's a massive gratitude. So much thanks going to our sponsors, MTN. And uh, we're looking forward to even more uh, collaborations as we go along. To the teams, uh, Joy 99.7 FM, and also uh, Joy News, we say thank you. It's been a wonderful collaboration as well. So congratulations once again to our friends in Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, Félicitations is what they'll say in French. And um, we will be back with something else. The qualifiers continue, and there's still more to come in these seasons as we also look forward to the wrap-up of the big uh, transfer windows. The Africa Games for us here in Ghana in the media is our next line of focus. We've got very little time to go. Uh, it begins late this month and uh, goes through to next month. Um, we will be bringing you uh, very important interviews and very comprehensive reports uh, as regards progress towards this tournament. All of those will be happening here on our channels. Thank you so much. Big salutes to all of you. My name is Nathaniel Atto, and I have love for sport.